I know just what I'm missing I'm glad I'm in the great northwest It's time to go fishing I'm glad I'm in the great northwest It's time to go fishing Welcome to Fishing the Northwest. Join your host, Larry Schoenborn, and his guest, river guide John Brody, as they drift and fly fish the famed Deschutes River in rugged central Oregon. John and Larry will drift for three days from the Trout Creek area, adjacent to the Warm Springs Indian Reservation, to an outpoint near the small town of Maupin. Bordered on the west by the Cascade Mountains and to the east by arid desert, the 250-mile Deschutes runs a relatively straight line from the south to its northern point where it merges with the mighty Columbia. The Deschutes is a fast-moving stream known primarily for its treacherous rapids, summer steelhead, and the famous red-side trout, a rainbow unique to the Deschutes identified by its brilliant red slash from head to tail. From Pelton Dam to the Columbia, the Deschutes may now be fished only with artificial lures and single barbless hooks, adding extra challenge for the many who travel far to experience this powerful stream. And although no fishing from boats is allowed below the city of Bend, tremendous fish are landed each year from the banks. We'll be right back. Well, Larry, we've had a good day. Looks like we've got good water conditions. It's down about four feet. Wow. Well, when I was here a couple of weeks ago, that's important. Turning a nice color. Yeah. We had high water, and I was kind of concerned about it, but it's dropped in to perfect fishing level. I was going to kind of show you the baggage raft here. Uh, Brian's been with me for about seven years. And uh, what we've got is river bags, waterproof river bags for camp for seven people. Everyone has their own bag. And uh, we've got the coolers. Brian's sitting on the cooler with all the dinner and breakfast and some of the goodies that we're going to bring down the river. Uh, we tarp the front of the raft because we get quite a bit of spray in the rapids. So we want to keep the gear as dry as we can for the folks as they go down the river. Uh, this is kind of unique back here. We keep all the, the grub boxes. It's kind of a hub of the whole camp, mm. the green grub box here. Looks like a little grub. That's our kitchen. <laughs> Boy, and, you're uh, getting bland down the river quick. Yep, the vines are up fast, and uh, uh, he goes down and sets up a camp. Right. Then, huh? He'll be ahead of us uh, all day long, and he'll have the camp all set up, ready for us to come in for the evening. Wow. And that works out real well. Well, Larry, here's the golden stone salmon fly that we're looking for, looking to uh, imitate with our flies today. They're all over. We've hit a pretty good time of the year. So People this, call them salmon flies, don't salmon they? Salmon flies. You know, there's two different varieties. Um, but this is the one that's pretty much most prevalent this time of the year. You'll also see one with a red thorax on it. But generally right. speaking, this yellow body is what we're trying to imitate with the various flies that we use. And they'll be coming off the trees, and those trout should be taking them pretty, pretty well on the surface, as a matter Looks of fact. Looks like a juicy meal. It does. Unfortunately, we can't use these. We'll be using, <laughs> the, we'll be using the imitations. Well, I think we're pretty much ready to set Brian loose here, good. get him on down river, and uh, we'll look forward to a pretty good day. Brian, we'll see you later. Okay. Set up camp, okay? There he goes. Well, see ya. See you later, Brian. See you tonight. Have a good day. You ready to shove off, John? Let's hit it. All right. Beautiful. Looks looking real fine. I'm sure we certainly glad the river dropped a little bit, Larry. That's important. I haven't been down this stretch, John. I've been from Whitehorse down. Uh huh. Uh, is it pretty calm like this? Actually, Larry, this is the calm before the storm. Right around oh. the bend, we pick up our first rapid. A little, uh, little bubble, a few ripples down here, and then we have a pretty good one, a class three called Trout Creek Rapids, named after the creek that drops in here. And that'll be our first test of white water on the Deschutes. So this gives you a little idea of what we've got coming uh, for the rest of the trip. Uh, class three rapids, which means it's fairly easily navi uh, navigated by people with average experience. You can come in really both ways. You see this big rock over here in the middle of the river? Yes. You can go either is. side of the rock, but I prefer the right side. It gives you a little smoother ride. Looks uh, like it. Pretty yeah. straight shot. Drops quite a bit. Yeah, it, it does. It comes down fairly well. Um, and when high water, like we had two weeks ago, it was real big waves. A lot of fun. Great for whitewater rafting. Here we go, Larry. Hang on tight. Okay. There's a fun one. There's a real cool, huh? A little water in. Pretty big waves, even for the smaller water. 
This full-bodied caddis, Larry, seemed to have been the one that's done the most amount of good for us over the years. A pale yellow body, a little orange thorax, and your bucktail caddis. Well, mean looking fly, John. Well, I tell you, over the years we've developed this one, and I, I'll stick to it. You can see I'm fairly, <laughs> fairly well healed with one it. One box of those. One box, and I'm fishing. This is this dab I'm using, Larry. I find it to be a pretty good product. And I liberally put it on, but I don't leave any globs of it. I work back up underneath the hair as so they you want to put it real high. Right. I notice the salmon flies sit up awful high. Real high. Huh? And I'm basically ready to go. I think I am too. Well, good. Let's give it a whirl. Okay. Let me show you one thing. Getting out of the boat can be the trickiest part of the whole trip. Okay. Just put both legs over and hike out. Okay. Like so? That is exactly right. All right. That makes it a lot easier. Thanks. Let's go. Quite good, don't they? Oh well. That fish. one isn't. That isn't a spawning no, fish. No, that isn't a spawner. That's a little, nice native. A little smaller. You bet. Pretty fish. Nice fish. Larry, there he is. Oh, pretty one. There's that. There's that to shoot red side I was red, talking red, about. Uh, Kind of a real, classic red stripe, you can see. Real healthy real, fish. Real small, small head and nothing but big stomach and that's his body. Though. Anyway, he took that <coughs> great big stone fly imitation on the dry, and uh, I think that should, that would be a, a pretty representative fish. They run a little bit larger normally, but uh, lots of them we can't that complain size. about that. Oh, lots of them this size, yeah. So I think we'll let him go, okay? Sure. We'll be right back with more fly fishing that he shoots. mention of here on the Deschutes River is the uh, Warm Springs Indian Reservation land here on your left. The whole west side of the river for about 22 miles was deeded to the Indians in the late 1800s, uh, the Confederated Tribe of the Warm Springs. So we stay off that property uh, all the way the first day and a half until we get back onto uh, uh, off the reservation. So there's only fish the right hand right, side of the river? We fish the east bank all the way. Seen an awful lot of salmon flies, Larry, working the edges under here, and haven't seen many fish taking them. I think that's a pretty good indication we better get to the nymphs, get down deep. These fish may be pretty well gorging themselves on those larval stages and on the helgramite stage. So this may be a better way to go. These are some of the islands, Larry, I was talking about a little earlier that we can stop and fish at. Any one of them really produces real well, uh, mostly on dry flies in the evening, but some of the deeper water produces real well on the nymphs. There's my helmet right there, I see it. Yes. That's it, Larry. Well, Ooh, Larry, we in business now. Well, Larry, we're gonna try different nymphs here. What I've got is an assortment of the big stone flies. We tried that bitch crick a little earlier. I think I've got one of them on. I'll uh -huh. keep that on and see how it does. Okay. I think what I'll try is this great big, just a great big weighted stonefly nymph and see how we do with this. Are these Montanas here weighted? The Montana's a lightly weighted nymph and that's a definite uh, area where you have to use some weight. I've caught a lot of big fish on that one. What's the name of this one? That's a little bird stone. That's, mm, that's, that's, a, that's a nice fly. Uh, does very well up here later on. I think uh, that's better fall stone than oh. it would be. Yeah. Actually it is. I keep them all in one box. But all okay. of these Helgramite imitations are what we're looking for right now. So maybe I'll give this big buggy one a try. Okay. Okay? Fine and dandy.
There's one. Keep up with him, John. Whoa, right over the top of you, Larry. Uh-oh. A oh, fly rod's fun, too. Drop your rod tip just slightly, would you, Larry? Thank you. giving you a tussle. What's that? That one's giving you a tussle. You bet. That's a heavy fish. That's a pretty one, Larry. Look at the size of this one. Oh, yeah. That one's about 15 or 16. He's not ready yet. to complain about a sore arm. <laughs> <laughs> Which fly did you have on that time? Uh, I put on that bitch crick again, Larry. Okay, I had just accidentally put one of those, switched to one of those. Fat fish. Sure got the red sides. Larry, this one I want to show you. Small head and big body. I'll go ahead and turn him loose. And now, he may be getting ready to spawn, though, be. as fat as it right. is. Or Here we go. Mm -hmm. uh, got him. Got one, John. Hang on, Larry. This one there you go. John, you're a good guide. <laughs> I don't care what they say. Huh? Yeah, it's, it's true. You know, you fool some of the people some of the <laughs> time. That? Now that fish is oh, there, that is a, that's a 20-inch trout, Larry. No, it's not. Oh, yeah, it's 16, maybe. Larry. Huh? I'll tell you what. Huh? I'll go a buck with you on that one. There you go. Right under the belly. Yep. Go ahead. Oh, I'd give anything for tea. That's about maybe 17, 18, though. Okay, it's what we'll do. Can okay. I get, put your rod out and we'll measure okay. tonight. Okay. From there to uh, the, the mark oh, maybe an inch in front of this white marking here. Right. Okay. That's the fish of the day. Yes, it is the nicest so far. Super. Yeah. Way to go, guys. Congratulations. That's a pretty one. I like yes, it. He's gone. We'll be right back. About three miles down there up uh, on the ridge. And those are the Mutton Mountains. They're uh, so named after the sheep herders that used to work this area pretty heavily back in the uh, late 1800s and early 1900s. Oh, we are. Uh, as a matter of fact, one year I did see a feral, wild feral sheep up there in that area when I was deer hunting. Found an old miner shack, uh, excuse me, sheep herder shack up there. But uh, the mountain mountains are uh, pretty much a landmark for the Whitehorse area. And those mountains rim the whole Whitehorse Canyon. I see. So when we see that, we know we're getting fairly close. What kind of flies do you use later in the year, John? Well, kind of as a rule of thumb, Larry, we say start big and go small. We start here in the, uh, with the large salmon fly patterns. And, and toward later on in the season, we drop down to number uh, 10s, 12s, and 14s, the Adams, Mosquito, Black Ants, etc. 
They do fairly well. Some bucktail. The bucktail caddis, you bet. Wing caddis, coachman, royal coachman are all excellent patterns. But start How about those flies? If they're not on top, they're not going to be dry. So. We use a little, we use a, a little tiny hair's ear nymph and just fish in the film, just underneath the surface. See if I see, so you're not getting down to the bottom right. like we just, are now. Just quite. break the film and those fish are feeding just subsurface. You'll see the, the dimpling effect sometimes. They'll just be feeding subsurface and that's where we, we do real well. You can see the baggage wrap tucked in there. Yeah. And I think that we'll uh, go on in for the evening. We've had kind of a long day and... You bet. You can fish here. Well, I think later on after dinner, we'll probably scoot up to that dry fly water. water for a ways here. You bet. And there's some pretty good water below here. Hey, Brian. Hey, Brian. How about give me a hand? I'll come in stern first. I wonder, should I put these rods down or they'll be all right? We'll get it. I think we got her. Do you want me to just grab one each? I think so. Here, Larry, take your pick. How about that one? No, fine. Okay, let me give you a baked potato. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you bet. Hope they're done. Uh -huh. Let me cut you some bran bread. How about some few asparagus? All right. Uh, growing boy there. We, well, let's do it right. Growing boy, thanks. Growing grandpa. Okay, a little hollandaise sauce. Oh, wow. <laughs> right on it. Oh, great. Well, there it is, Larry. No, great. Product. Product. Uh, Give it a try. Wow. How I get the there? river view, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, Larry, it's about time to do some dry fly fishing. The sun's dropped behind the hill. Let's Water give it a whirl. Right. Oh, okay. If I can walk after eating all that dinner. <laughs> well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. It down there to Whitehorse, John. Well, Larry, right down in that canyon, you can see down there about a mile, uh, about a mile, we start the head of the Whitehorse Canyon, and uh, the rapid there is uh, about two miles long. So Looks like some wild country. Yeah, it really is. This just drops into a pretty deep canyon. This is one of the deeper canyons uh, here on the Deschutes, so I think you'll really enjoy that part of the trip. Oh, sure. You bet. I've drifted through that either, so that'll be fun. Well, that'll be a lot of fun. Uh -huh. Looking forward to it. While you were cooking, I uh, walked down here and fished a little uh -huh. last night. Good fishing water. And right underneath that tree there was a big shadow about that long that came up and looked at my fly about four times. <laughs> That's about all he showed you. Yeah. Yeah. This whole area has about uh, as good a fish population, Larry, as there is in the river. As a matter of fact, they do electroshock uh, uh, shocking of the river, like I mentioned earlier. And in some sections, there's as much as 3,000 fish per mile of native rainbows. Uh, drops down occasionally down to something like a thousand fish per mile in some of the areas, but the population in here is as high as anywhere. Haven't they found that those native red sides stay in a, almost stay in the same hole all their lives? That's true. I'd say within about a quarter mile they migrate uh, in and around that area, but they're not a, they're not the migratory fish like the steelhead. That's why they couldn't be restocked. Right. They'd have to be restocked in each little spot. It's true. That's, that's also another rationale for the almost catch and release fishery right. up here. Uh, most of the people that I take seem to enjoy hooking fish and uh, releasing. Maybe they'll keep a few for breakfast or a couple to take home, but uh, we don't seem to dent the population at all because we don't take many fish. Well, there it is. Quite a rapid, huh? It certainly is. I'm always glad we come down and take a look at it first, Larry. You just never know if there's a problem or any kind of trouble in there. You do that all the time. Every run, every run. Okay. What we're going to try to do is hit it just to the right of this little rock you see, barely underwater. Yes. Once you get beyond that, it's a pretty straight shot, but it is big water, a lot of waves. So sit real square in the boat, 
and I'll try to hit him square on. Two miles long, huh? About two miles. He's perfect. Very He's common. Perfect. Straight up and down here, Brian. He's perfect. How you miss? Oh, he hit that right with that. Okay, Larry. Let's go for it. Yeah, then he does. It uh, drops about 25 feet, Larry, in this first section right here. Uh, it looks like. Uh, interesting. Here we go. It's a little bit of a right hand jog. Like a roller coaster. And we pretty much have it made. The water. There it is. You're a good one, kid. Try to pull over here to avoid that big hole at the bottom. Okay. Oh, there's some more nice ones. When I want to feel natural and free When I want to get away and just be me When I want to get back to the way things were I know just what I'm missing I'm glad I'm in the great northwest It's time to go fishing I'm glad I'm in the great northwest It's time to go fishing Welcome to Fishing the Northwest. This week, we'll rejoin Larry Schoenborn and river guide John Brody for the conclusion of our two-part drift and fly fishing trip down the famed Deschutes River in Central Oregon. Named by French explorers as the River of the Falls, the Deschutes is considered by many to be one of the great fishing streams in America. Although the river hosts populations of German brown, Dolly Varden, Eastern Brook, and whitefish, it's the summer steelhead and unique red side trout for which the Lower Deschutes is most widely known. This beautiful river is a great favorite with Oregon residents, so much so that in 1983, concerned citizens raised over a million dollars to save as much access land as possible for public use. The Deschutes is a great whitewater favorite as well, with class four and five rapids drawing raft, camping, and drift boat enthusiasts from throughout the Northwest. This fast-moving stream in the 21 miles from Warm Springs to the famous White Horse Rapids, seen here, drops 190 feet, comparable to the Colorado's course in the Grand Canyon. We'll be right back. Larry, this is kind of an interesting spot here at North Junction. This is where the railroad wars actually ended, 1910 through 1914, two competing railroad companies fought for the rights to build up the North-South line to California. And instead of pooling their resources, they, be, they both worked up either side of the river. Uh, eventually, the west side won. Got some real pretty water coming up here, Larry, on your right, just above the bridge. I think what we'll do is try some dry fly fishing up there. Okay. Maybe that railroad train turns them on, John. I think so. Hot. Real hot. There's some areas down here that are great. That pleases you and the guy. Okay, your turn, John. Oh. 
fish. That's a long fish that spawned not That's too right. long ago. Yeah, About long and thin. 18 inches, uh -huh. but he spawned. You bet. And, and once really again, nice. that big caddis buck did the trick. Nice fella. Well, good. Okay, fella, go back. There you go. Took a look at it. You see that? Wow, that was he a dandy too. Came up, took a real good look at it. Yeah, yeah. Come a little faster, it tricks him more. Oh, you see? see that? Yes. They're turning from it, Larry. I don't know if they don't want that one, Larry. I think we've got to move down river. That's about as good as we're going to be able to throw at him today. Well, this was pretty productive. It really was. It really was. But uh, I think we put him down pretty well. Let's go on down about, uh, oh, I'd say about an hour down river. Okay. And get in some better fishing. All right. Good. Well, Larry, right up ahead, we've got Buckskin Mary Falls. It's a real, pretty good rapid. Real familiar with that Are one, you? John. Yes. Uh, wife and I, with a friend, years ago when jet boats were new, came up got above the falls and the motor kicked into reverse. Oh, right. I didn't know that sort of thing happened, but uh, we had to swim. Oh my goodness. And, and that water's was, cold. It was cold and high water year, big rollers, probably higher than now. Oh, be darn. Well, that, uh, that was exciting. Yes, it was. Well, that won't happen today, but we have okay. big rollers. Okay. You ready? Ready. Let's head down. Okay. Well, we're right on the lift. It, it really drops. Might be more than that. And big rollers. but fun on that oh, one. Boy. Well, Larry, this is our camp for the evening. This is just for old Buckskin Mary Falls. And Brian's got the water boil and the grub box ready to go. He puts together quite a place. So people are loading up. Maybe you could uh, show us some of the tackle we should use on the Deschutes, John. Uh, what flies are best for this time of year? Well, I think I'll start out, Larry, by showing you these great big yellow-bodied caddis flies, uh, bucktail caddis. Uh, we use them in the four, six, and eight, uh, eight sizes. What determines what size you use, John? Well, Larry, if the naturals are coming down and the trout are taking them real well, we can go to the larger flies. But if we notice that they're not taking them quite as well, we'll drop down into the uh, smaller sizes, the eights and, uh, and that, those sizes. They're more there. finicky, you go smaller. Right. As the fish, get, as the fish are well, more well fed, we go uh -huh. to the smaller flies. I caught my biggest one on one of those weighted nymphs. Right. Which ones are best of those? Well, there's about four or five different varieties, Larry, that we use. These are your big, black, bushy stone fly nymphs that work real well. But particularly well uh, up on the Deschutes is this bitch crit. Bitch crit. It's also called a girdle bug. I prefer it with the yellow or the orange thorax. They work real well. Sure did. That's the one I got the big one on. I might mention something else, Larry. We also do like to, even though these are weighted flies, we do like to put a little bit of split shot about six to eight inches above the fly most of the time. Mm -hmm. That surprised me, uh, but it sure, sure helped. It, you bet. I, I think the reason for that is these fish are on the bottom, and when they're not feeding well on the surface, the deeper you can get in this swift water, the weight really does help. Makes, makes for better fishing. A lot of lures will work on the Deschutes, but the key, I understand, is fishing right along the bottom with pencil lead, maybe like for steelhead. That'll work well. The popular ones are the rooster tail, and then the spinner bug already has a single hook on it. Which is a requirement, as you know, this right. year, Larry. Then uh, the little meps are good, uh, size ought and one, and uh, little sneaks. In fact, that's a super color. Uh, the red with the black spots. Yeah. And another really good lure, especially later in the season, are these little hot shots rattled right along the bottom. Right. Other lures will work, but uh, 
A trick that uh, a lot of people that are getting started fly fishing maybe don't realize is they can take these weighted nymphs you're talking about and fish them just like they would with a single egg or a worm or for steelhead, brat them along the bottom with uh, their spinning outfit and a, a little bit of weight, shot, a bit, bounce sure. them along, no and, and uh, that'll get them started on fly fishing. Now, a thing people can do is take the hooks off of them on lots of the lures and add these side wash hooks right. and just take a pliers because they're open at the eye and pinch that hook on That'll and then work. pinch the barb. But uh, why don't you show me how you do that with one that's got a treble hook on it? Sure, Larry. What you do is take a pair of needle nose pliers, take your treble hook, and really pinch off two of the hooks, which satisfies the requirement. And then be sure you pinch down the barb like that. And now you have a legal hook, which is just as successful as a treble hook. What other flies do you use besides the one we've used on this trip? Generally, Larry, we'll use some of the smaller flies, the atoms, or the parachute atoms. Another excellent fly would be the renegade. Or the little winged caddis, humpies, in sizes 12 through 18. Generally speaking, you start big, and as the season progresses, we go to smaller flies. John, the people that haven't fished with flies a lot can use these dry flies, too, with their spinning outfits by just taking a plastic float that you fill with water or a torpedo type. I've got a torpedo type rigged up here to fiddle around with a little and put a four to six foot leader, probably three, four pound right. test like we're using, and just tie their fly on and throw this out and fly fish. It's, it's really amazing the number of fish they'll catch and they'll get confidence in their fly fishing and pretty soon they'll be after a fly rod See too. See how well flies really work. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's easy and actually you can reach some areas with that that you can't reach with a fly rod. It's surprising how often lots of places the fish really want flies. That's going to be the best thing you can use. No question. And a, a fellow with a spinning rod can fish with them. John, we've used strictly floating fly lines this trip. Do you ever use any sinking fly lines? Well, really, there you don't really require it because we're fishing short casts upstream and under the trees. And that's really one of the biggest secrets to fishing the Deschutes River. You don't fish a lot of the river. You fish short stretches of it and in close. Right. right. It's too big a river. You, you just take a small section of river and that is yours. Up behind rocks, hummocks, up under the trees. So really, sinking lines are not required. What's a hummock? Big grassy mounds that grow out oh. of it. Those big grassy little islands, those are exceptionally good. The fish feed on that grass. You sure that isn't a hummel? <laughs> I think that's uh, out of uh, the old country. Well, it looks like Brian's got the raft pretty well loaded, Larry. It's about time we leave. Okay, well, we got some rigging done. You bet. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you hit it a lot windier than this, don't you? Well, we certainly have been lucky. You can get that afternoon breeze. That influence of the Columbia then causing the pressure difference can really cause some uh, pretty strong winds up yeah. here. We've had uh, no wind at all to speak of. It hasn't interfered at all with our fishing. We'll be right back with more fly fishing that he shoots. That should be a fish. There he is. Oh, nice one. Oh, that's a nice fish. Real good. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to go between your legs, Larry. Ooh, that's yeah. a nice fish. Oh, come on, fish. You got a little line tangled around him. Now try to stop him. Yeah. <laughs> a little bigger. Got a little of his spawning color, too. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. Something about half stone. of them are this time of year. Good. Oh, that's a little bigger is right. It is a bigger fish. Mm hmm. I think about 15, 16? Oh, I'd say a good 15, sure. Oh, Let him go. Gone. Good. There's more fish in the sea. <laughs> what we normally do, Larry, is just fish right up under the trees like this. These little shady areas are generally our best bet. I didn't like that one. Maybe just a little bit closer. There it is. 
That should be fish. <laughs> He's going upstream on me. He rose for another one just before he took yeah. yours. Hungry devil. Oh, that's a brighter fish, maybe. Mm hmm Yeah. Uh, 13 incher? Yeah, Larry. Sure is. Oh, that's a beauty. Oh, isn't, isn't that a pretty size? Isn't that pretty one, Larry? Yes, it is. You bet. That's, that's a nice sized fish. They like to hang out under the uh, shade, huh? Right under those trees. If you're not under the trees, you're not fishing. Right under the grass. That's hard to get some people to realize, you know? It really is. When I totally taken... remember the, that the fish feed on the grass. That's right. I tell them <laughs> the fish feed just like cows. They're grazing. <laughs> Larry, this water right behind us should be outstanding for dry flies. It always has been in the past. Okay. We're going to pull in here, put the flies on. You can wade all the way across. So we should have a lot of fun. Well, Larry, I think we'll fish this beautiful dry fly water right here. I think if you start right up where that tree overhangs the river and fish that little open section. Okay. Right down to there, you'll do real well. Good place for a figure S cast. I think it would be. It... next to the weeds? Right on the reeds. Come on, fish. Ho oh, oh. ho! Pretty fish. Oh, good size one. that got some length good sized buck ready go no. and, and there he goes we'll be right back you think the river's got more color? It really does look like that, Larry, and I know it's rising just a little bit. Well, we can work our nymphs right up here behind us, and maybe that'll be the answer. Warm days have probably melted more of that snow. Right, it must have, because we've definitely got picked up some color to the water. You fish all down through here? Well, I think we'll fish up a little bit behind us. Okay. John. Thank you. That's a nice fish. I knew he'd take. Oh, that's a nice fish. You bet. Right under the trees, eh, Larry. That's the answer. Now my. <laughs> that was a whoa. Long, that was a long cast you made there too. <laughs> yeah. You don't take much if you get under the trees. You'll have to show me how you cast that far. <laughs> oh, that's a pretty fish. That Man, is he's right. In a bad spot fish too. near you. I got him rolled up in the... Yeah, he's, he just likes to twist. Oh, I'll have to he's get out to get here. you any way he can. There it is. <laughs> oh, that is a pretty one, Larry. 
It is. 17 inches, maybe. 16 and a half. Oh, he's good 16. Yeah. See, we'll get it. There he goes. It's a neat little deal there, John. You keep it pretty handy, too, don't you? You bet. Those little hemostats really help. The little bubbles are not kind of nice to flip under a tree. Oh, you, you bet. You know, especially spots like this where it's real tougher. Other areas, Larry, where they're helpful is where you've got a nice big rock pile way out toward the middle of the river. Yes, you know, and no one's fishing in between. It. You know. yeah, and no one's fishing it. And it drifts natural. Well, Larry, our afternoon breeze has come up. We've got about an hour to go yet until we take out. Let's just go ahead and run it out. We've okay. Had, we've had a pretty good day. And oh, super day. Caught some fish. Looks super like day. it's about time. Okay. Okay. Oh, what a drop. Oh, what a drop, John. It didn't look like that much of a drop up in the road. Looking at it. That thing really dropped. I bet that rock in the middle down there gets a few boats. What's that, Larry? I bet that rock in the middle gets a few boats. Yeah. You bet. Quite a long rapid. That's about 75 yards, at least. Oh, it's longer than that. Well, this lower part. Yes. This is where good equipment, Larry, is so important. You don't want to take a chance on having some bad equipment. And I really recommend a rapid like this. You follow someone through your first time. Quite important. Good to have a spare oar, too. Like you do. Hang on. OK, I got her. In. There's really a river. <laughs> what do they call this? This is Upper Wapanisha. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. good job. Great job. Woo. Boy, there's a drop. Yes. That's not so bad. Okay, and there's a rock in the middle. There, we can position ourselves. Okay. Now you want to get back in the current just ever so slightly to get over to this little seam I was telling you about. You gotta stay away from that uh, rock there, don't you? Boy, that's a drop and a half, isn't it? Okay. Wow, we Hang on, there Larry. You go. Here goodbye, we go. Goodbye, half. Nothing to it! Nothing! Way to go there, John! Well, thanks for showing us the Deschutes, John. It's been a super three days. Well, thank you, Larry. It's been our pleasure. Your crew is really to be complimented. They were really professional. It wasn't just the scenery and the fishing that was fantastic, but your crew is really special. Well, we enjoy it, Larry, just as much as you do, I can assure you. Thanks. Looking forward to having you next year. Thanks for showing us the shoot. You bet. Join us again next week for more Fishing the Northwest. Join expert John Brody at Larry's for a Deschutes River fishing clinic. John will be at the Gresham store on Monday the 17th and at the Oregon City store on Tuesday the 18th. The clinic will be from 1 to 9 p.m. both days, and John will be available to visit with you, answer your questions about the Deschutes, talk about his guided tours in the North Oregon Coast streams, and give you tips on fly fishing, steelheading, and salmon fishing. 
Come to Larry's and Gresham tomorrow the 17th or the Oregon City Store on Tuesday the 18th and let's talk fishing with Fishing the Northwest Guide, John Brody. Join expert John Brody at Larry's for a Deschutes River Fishing Clinic. John will be at the Gresham store on Monday the 24th and the Oregon City store on Tuesday the 25th. The clinic will be from 1 to 9 p.m. both days, and John will be available to visit with you, answer your questions about the Deschutes, talk about his guided tours in the North Oregon Coast streams, and give you tips on fly fishing, steelheading, and salmon fishing. Come to Larry's and Gresham on Monday the 24th or the Oregon City store on Tuesday the 25th, and let's talk fishing with Fishing the Northwest Guide, John Brody.